Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. It is lovely to be able to begin by sharing the good news that our friends in the Huntsbills and Mark have been able to appoint a new rector, Reverend Christine Judson. I understand that Chris was a curate in Highbridge a few years ago, which I can testify is a wonderful place to learn about what it means to be a priest. I am sure she is excited about her return to this beautiful area. And I have no doubts that she will be a fantastic rector. With Reverend Martin Little due to arrive with his family in Highbridge in January, and Chris in the Huntsbills and Mark in February. It is an exciting time for all of us in this particular part of the Axbridge Deanery. And I find myself wondering what exactly I'll be doing with my time by next March. Of course, I am delighted to be sharing ministry once again with some colleagues and I look forward to working alongside both Martin and Chris at the start of 2021. It is indeed an exciting time. I wonder if I asked you this morning, what is love? How you might respond. Take a moment now and think to yourself, what is love? I think I talk about love quite a lot. I often preach about love, not just at weddings. And I believe the Christian faith is based on the foundation of love. God is love, as we read in 1 John. Love, love, love. In our Gospel reading for today, Jesus talks about love, but in a very particular way. And I'll share this reading with you now. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment of the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. One of the first things to note about this particular encounter is that the Pharisees and the Sadducees did not like one another, but they were united in a shared dislike of Jesus. So, together they ask a lawyer, an expert in the law, to test Jesus. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? This was a test for Jesus, a trap. A little research suggests there are 613 laws across Deuteronomy and Leviticus all of which were to be respected and obeyed 
equally. In his response, Jesus refuses to choose only one law and instead goes to the very heart of all the laws. Jesus talks first about love. In his response, Jesus takes the Pharisees and the Sadducees back to the core of their shared faith tradition and quotes from both Deuteronomy and Leviticus. Jesus is not innovating. These are the basic fundamental elements of the Jewish faith that he would have learned as a child. This is something that the Pharisees and the Sadducees should have known. As Tom Wright says in his commentary on this passage, Jesus' response was so traditional that nobody could challenge him on it, and so deeply searching that everyone else would be challenged by it. Many of you will also recognise that this response of Jesus is often used before the time of confession in a Eucharistic service. These words of Jesus that lead us to repentance were originally used in response to a trap. So let's return for a moment to the question I asked you at the start of the talk. What is love? Well, some brave researchers asked a group of children aged between four and eight years old about love. Here is what a few of them had to say. Carl, aged five, said that love is when a girl puts on perfume and a boy puts on aftershave and they go out and they smell each other. Danny, aged seven, said that Love is when my mummy makes coffee for my daddy and she takes a sip before giving it to him to make sure the taste is okay. Karen, aged seven, says, but when you love somebody, your eyelashes go up and down and little stars come out of you. These children are responding to the question, what is love, with examples of where they have seen love or how they imagine love. They have observed some of these things in the people around them. And so this is what they have learned love looks like. Like Carl, Danny and Karen, Jesus learned what love is as a child through the lens of his Jewish faith. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. Love God with everything you have. Everything. God should be our top priority, more important than anything else. God demands everything. The two words, you shall, are crucial. This is a command. There is no choice. Jesus doesn't say, love the Lord or love your neighbour when the pandemic is over. Or love the Lord or love your neighbour when you feel like reading your Bible. Or love the Lord or love your neighbour when you have time. There are no options. Loving God is everything. It requires our effort. Loving God is something you do even when you don't feel like it. It's a duty. But it also requires sincerity. And that is a tricky balance. When we devote ourselves to something, often we find that our love for it grows. 
The same is true for loving God. If we want to nurture our love for God, we need to spend time with him, praying, listening, reading the Bible, worshipping him on our own and with others. Then what feels like an effort will become a joy and a pleasure. But what about you shall love your neighbour as yourself? Well, our love for our neighbours is fuelled by our love for God. Our love for our neighbours is fuelled by our love for God. Love your neighbour as yourself, the golden rule. You might hear people describe it as treat others as you would like to be treated. But Jesus actually goes further. Treating others the way we would like to be treated keeps the focus on ourselves. Loving our neighbour requires commitment and sacrifice and moves the focus onto others. It is hard to love someone else as much as you love yourself. My problems are always the most important problems. That's part of being human. And if we're honest, we're probably all guilty of this. Which is why Jesus encourages us to radically love our neighbours. Today, that love might mean simply wearing a face mask, giving your neighbour or a friend a telephone call, delivering food or prescriptions, or donating food or time to the local food bank. But the radical love that Jesus calls us to is more than a feeling, more than action. It is a posture of humility and service that enables someone else's challenge to be ours. This is the answer to the question, what is love, that Jesus is offering us today. Amen.